solving systems of linear equations algebraically. You're supposed to have already done the lesson opener. If you haven't yet, pause, do the lesson opener, and come back and check your work. How'd you do on that lesson opener? Check out the first one. I got 2, 1 as my intersection, so 2, 1 is my solution. I even checked it off to the side and it totally worked. Looking at the next one, I graphed these two lines. I was already kind of noticing that they have the same slope, but when we're graphing solutions, I still want to see you graph that. So I see my graph, I'm confirming, yep, they do indeed have the same slope. They're parallel, so they never intersect, so no solution. Now, what are the limitations to solving systems by graphing? I mean, we're only human, we can only graph so precisely. So what are some other ways we could solve systems without needing to graph? Let's solve algebraically. We have two methods to solve linear systems. One is substitution, the other is elimination. Let's talk specifically about substitution. When is it a good time to use substitution? Well, typically, if one of your equations is already solved for x or y, or if one of those variables in one of the equations has a coefficient of one. So let's do a few of them and see if you can pick up what I mean. On example A, the second equation, y has a coefficient of one. It would be really easy for me to take that second equation and solve for y. Let's do it. I labeled my two equations, one and two, just to help us keep track of them. So now my equation two is in slope intercept form. This is helpful to me because I now have an equivalency statement for y equals. And that means I can take that value, 10 minus 2x, and substitute into the first equation for y. Let's use some colors to really emphasize what we're doing. Isn't that super clear to see that we've substituted the value of y as 10 minus 2x? Now we have one equation, one variable, and we're pretty much pros at this. Let's finish solving. Show all your steps. I really hope that you're doing a great job of showing your equations and how to solve. It's so important to get this practice now so that we're ready for things that are coming up later that are so much bigger. We have our x coordinate, but that's not a solution to a system. One of the big reasons for solving graphically is so that you know conceptually the solution is that point where they intersect, or sometimes they don't, or sometimes they do all the time, right? So we're not done. We have to find that y coordinate. The nice thing about substitution is we already have an equation that says y equals 10 minus 2x. So easy to substitute 7 in for x and get y. The solution is 7, negative 4. I wrote it as a point. That's the easiest way to do it. And I remember when I'm writing a point, I write it alphabetical. So the x coordinate first, then the y coordinate. It's also a great idea to make sure that it satisfies both equations. Now I use the second equation to get that y value. So I know it satisfies the second equation. Let's do a quick check that our solution satisfies equation 1. We can see it works. On example B, is one of the equations solved for one of the variables? No, not yet. But do we have one of the variables with a coefficient of one? Yes, in equation one, x has a coefficient of one. So I'm going to solve equation one for x. Now I've solved equation one for x, I'm going to substitute the equivalent value into equation two. But remember, we're substituting for x. After solving and showing all of my steps, we find that y equals zero. Are we done? No. We know that the solution is a point, so I need to get that x coordinate. It's super easy because x is already equal to five minus three y. Substitute in, we have our x coordinate. Looks like my solution is five zero. And I know that that works for that first equation because I substituted into the first equation to get the second coordinate. So all I need to do now is check that it works in my second equation and I verified my solution. It works. Take a look at C. I'm really excited about C because what do you notice? One of our equations is y equals already. One less step to go. 
All I need to do now is substitute that equivalent value of y into that first equation for y, and I have it. Why don't you pause the video, do the entire problem, check it, and come back and check in with me. I got the solution one, two, and I verified the solution in the opposite equation, the one that I didn't use to get the second coordinate. Look at D. D is a fun one because D has both of them solved for Y. I just substitute one value in for the other value, and it doesn't matter which way I go. So if Y equals 4X minus 9, I can substitute up here in place of that Y. Or if you really care to, take negative 5X plus 3, substitute down there. The most important thing is to verify that, of course, these are now equal. If they both equal Y, they equal each other, and solve that equation. Go ahead, finish it, check your solution in a moment. 4 thirds, negative 11 thirds. We should become accustomed to solutions not being perfect integers. In the real world, things don't always come out so nice and easy. That substitution, let's take a look at elimination. Miss Ryan? Now, when we don't always have an X or a Y that has a coefficient of one, so it's easily isolated, it's nice to have another method to fall back on, like elimination. For elimination, we add to eliminate one of the variables and then substitute it in to find the other variable. So let's try. We have two equations here in our system. Now, what we want to do is be able to add straight down and eliminate right off the bat one of those variables. If I were to add these two together, my 2x plus my negative 2x would add out. So I get lucky there and I'm able to eliminate 2x just by adding. We won't always get lucky. Sometimes we'll have to tweak it a little bit before we add. If I add straight down, I have 2x plus negative 2x. Those add straight out. I eliminated them. So now I have negative 2y plus 3y. Well, that's just going to be 1y equals 4 plus 6 is 10. Oh my gosh, I already have one of my solutions. That's crazy. I kind of like elimination. Now that I have one of my solutions, I can pick either equation to plug it back into to find x. So I think I'm just going to keep it simple and pick equation 1 right here. So if I substitute, right, after I eliminate, I then substitute. If I substitute my y back into this original equation, so then I have 2x minus 20 equals 4, and I can just solve for x. All right, so it's looking like my solution is 12, 10. Make sure you're writing your solutions as a coordinate to your system. So let's check it and make sure it works. Since we already used equation 1 to find the second coordinate, I'm just going to plug my solution into the second equation to make sure it works in both equations. Looks like it checks out. I have 6 equals 6. Let's try elimination again on this next one. As I look at this next system, I don't see an x or y with a coefficient of 1 that would be easy to isolate. So I'm going to stick with elimination. So if I were to add straight down right now, would any of my variables be eliminated? Well, negative 2 plus negative 4, that's not going to be eliminated. Negative 2 plus negative 7, that's not either. Okay, so this is where I'm going to have to play with the equation a little bit. Which variable could I multiply by something and make it eliminate with the other variable? 2 and 4, well, if I multiply 2 times 2, Two, I can make it a 4 so those would eliminate. 2 and 7, oh, I don't, there's nothing I can really multiply by 2 to make it 7 or 7 to multiply to get 2. Um, so I'd have to make those a 14 and multiply both equations. So let's just stick with multiplying the first equation. I'm going to change the first equation so that I get a 4 here. Now I want to get a positive 4 because positive 4 plus negative 4, those would add out. So I'm going to multiply by negative 2. So when we multiply by negative 2 to change this to 4x, we have to multiply everything by negative 2, right, to maintain the equality there. So I'm going to distribute this negative 2 to all three pieces of the equation, and I'm actually going to write my new equation over here so that I'm writing a whole new system. We want to be careful not to make mistakes, so it's best to rewrite it all over here. Now really check to make sure you performed that multiplication correctly. An error here is going to mess up all of our solving work. So negative 2 times 2x is 4x, negative 2 times negative 2y is positive 4y, and negative 2 times negative 6 is positive 12. This equation we decided we didn't have to change anything on, so I'm just going to rewrite it exactly as it's written. Okay, now it's time to eliminate, so I'm going to add straight down. 4x plus negative 4x, those add out. 4y plus negative 7y is negative 3y equals 12 plus negative 9 is positive 3. So then I can divide by my negative 3, and I get y equals negative 1 as one of my solutions. Now, after I eliminate one variable, I substitute the solution I get to find the other variable. So I can choose first equation or second equation to substitute this one in. I'll do something different this time and substitute it into the second equation. 
So it looks like my solution is going to be four, negative one. Make sure you're writing your solutions as coordinates. Go ahead and check your solution. Remember, since we use the second equation to find the second coordinate, you just need to check it in the first equation. Pause, do that. Looks like it all checked out. Okay, after I multiply that second equation by two, I end up with six X minus two Y equals 10, being really careful as I multiply. Now I'm gonna add straight down to eliminate. Look what happens though. My negative six X plus six X eliminated because they add away. My negative two Y plus two Y, those add away as well. So that's actually gonna leave me with a zero here because there's nothing left on that left side. Oh my goodness, and look what happens over here. Negative 10 plus 10, those eliminate. So I have zero equals zero. Oh my gosh, does zero equal zero? Yeah, that's 100% a true statement. It's not saying like zero equals negative one or something. So since this is true, we just say we have infinitely many solutions. So remember what that looks like on a graph? Yeah, that was when we had a line directly on top of another line. So these two lines must just be the same and that's why we ended up getting zero equals zero. So infinitely many solutions is what I'm gonna write down here. Let's try this second one as well. I'm already a little suspicious because I see a lot of repeating values. So this one, if I add straight down, will I eliminate one of my variables? Yeah, for sure. So if I go add straight down, I'm gonna eliminate my X's. I'm gonna eliminate my Y's because those would just add out. So that leaves me with a zero again, just like this problem. But look over here, six plus 10, six plus 10 is 16. Zero does not equal 16. That's totally not true. So what do you think that means? That means we have no solution. So graphically, that's when we had two parallel lines, right? So we had the same slope but different y-intercepts. So if you get a statement that's just not true as your ending answer, you're just gonna say no solution. Look at this last one. Oh man, it looks like there's nothing I can multiply easily to make like three, five, or seven, two. So what, do, what am I gonna have to do? I think we're gonna have to multiply both equations by something. Okay, so if I multiply both equations, then I wanna make these two coefficients match up so I get a 15x and a 15x. Right, but remember, we want them to add out. So one of those has to be negative. Got it? Yeah, does All it right. matter which variable I go after? No, we could do the 14, seven and two, and make one of those negative. Okay, so why don't you guys pick which one you're trying to go after, multiply, but be sure to multiply one of those equations by a negative so they add out. I chose to eliminate my y's, so I multiplied my first equation by negative two because I wanted to be careful not to forget to multiply one by a negative, and then my second equation by seven. Looks like I ended up getting x equals negative two, and now I'm going to substitute that back in to solve for y. If you did it a different way, don't worry, we're gonna end up with the same answers in the end. So it looks like I got negative two, three as my solution. And I even checked it in that second equation and it worked out. Solving systems algebraically is awesome. I really like to substitute. And I like to eliminate.